Well, happy new year. It is 2024 and it's time for us to get rolling again with our grace groups. And uh, I'm overly excited uh, with a fresh new year and fresh new start. Um, we're in our sermon series on God's leaders and what a privilege to be selected in any role as a servant to the Most High, saying to those around us, come on, let's go. Um, got a wonderful definition for leadership from Toby yesterday after the morning assembly. And I don't know if I can quote it exactly or, or not. He said it's six words long. Uh, what is a leader? A leader is someone who he didn't say inspires. Uh, he didn't say enables. Do you remember what the word was? <laughs> ah, uh, you'll have to call Toby and find out if you're a grace group listener. It'll come to me during the video. I can remind you. I remind myself and then tell you. But anyway, um, a leader basically helps other people to complete the mission. And so um, God can use all of us for that purpose. So I got lots more that I could say, but Russ, what uh, what do you have for our Grace Group hosts and attendees this week? How can we dig deeper into this truth? Well, I mean, as I was saying earlier, I think, you know, in terms of Joshua, I think he covered that so well. It was, it was kind of hard to squeeze anything more out of Joshua himself. But I was thinking about, you know, what else does the Bible say about being a leader? I mean, there's there's a few verses I dug out. Um, first one, Romans 12, 4, it says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. And I think, you know, with terms of the leaders, not just a leader, but, all people in servitude, you know, we need to serve according to the gifts we've been given. Um, if your gift isn't cleaning the bathrooms, you shouldn't be cleaning the bathrooms. Um, if your gift is cleaning the bathrooms, it's probably a bad, bad view to take on that one. But um, serve according to your gifts. You know, I believe the Lord is going to call you according to what He can do through you. Not necessarily according to what your abilities are, but what he can do through you. And your spiritual gifts are what he does through you. So keep that in mind. Uh, Philippians 2, 3 to 4 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And and I think you might have covered this in your sermon, but you know, serve with humility. Um I think we've all had that manager or that boss who seems to be all about themselves and they don't really care much for the people under them. It's like, well, you're under me. You're going to do what I say, and that's the extent of it. But, you know, a leader who sees the people who work for him, who sees what they're going through or sees what they might be having difficulty with and, you know, has humility in himself to go to them and say, how can I serve you, not just how can you serve me? You know, it's that's what we're looking for. And also you can look at Matthew 20. I won't read it here, verses 26 to 28 for another example of that. Proverbs eleven fourteen: where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You know, as a leader, make wise decisions. You know, consult with your fellow leaders, but also consult with those that you lead. You know, stay in prayer about your area of leadership. Be prepared to follow the Spirit's guidance. I mean, Talk to those who work with you. You can never, I don't care how much you think you may, but you can never know every facet of what is going on underneath you in terms of the other areas that um, your particular area of servership encompasses. For example, you know, in the bank, I mean, I've been there about six months now, so I've picked up a fair amount of it, but I still don't have the experience in specific areas that the people who work in the food bank have. So for me to just make a decision, doesn't make sense. I prefer to go out and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. These are my thoughts. Please give me yours. What am I missing? You know, be humble with that too. Be prepared to make the leadership a two-way street. I mean, obviously, you make the decision at the end of the day, but make it based on good, wise advice and good, wise information. Finally, in Luke 12, 48, it says, But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes, shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. 
again, you touched on this a little in your sermon, but understand your responsibilities. Understand the commitment you've made when becoming a leader. Understand the judgment you will come under for becoming a leader. And let this drive you into looking at the other points and saying, I must embrace these. I must use these because if you don't, you will not be able to fulfill your responsibilities and you will come under judgment. Yeah. And one last example, I'm not going to read this passage, but it's pretty long. If you want to read it for yourselves, it's in John chapter 13, it's verses 13 to 17. It's the example of Christ washing the disciples' feet. Now, as you probably know, that the job of washing the feet was given to the lowest servant. It was really the humblest job in the house. And yes, Jesus gave an example of a leader being willing to be that humble and always people being willing to serve others in that humble way. But I think this works in two directions. Yes, be willing to serve humbly, but also be willing to be humbly served. Mm -hmm. you know, there are things that people might come to us and say, I want to serve you in this way. And you may be like, mm, kind of like Peter. You're not going to serve me that way. Or, you know, my pride's going to get in the way and say, well, I don't want you cleaning my shoes while I'm wearing them or whatever might be applicable. Why would we stop somebody's blessing? Why would we stop somebody expressing themselves in terms of what they believe they have been led to do? You know, be prepared to be humbly served as you humbly serve. And again, as I already mentioned, remember your responsibilities as a leader. Embrace all of them. You know, look to the whole counsel of God to guide you as a leader. You know, we can take one page and think, well, this is great and go with that. But we need to take the whole counsel. That's scriptural. You've come under responsibility. You've come under greater condemnation. If you don't keep that responsibility, you're going to give an account for how you've led. So make sure that you have led using the whole counsel of God with every facet of what God guides us to do with that. And then you can serve at least with a good conscience. Amen. Stubbornness, pride, um, laziness, avoidance of responsibility, whether you're a leader or a follower, those things stand in the way. So we got to abandon those uh those erroneous evil perspectives and adopt uh, that spirit-filled perspective that you just described so well. I looked it up and found the definition. <laughs> this is a little longer than what Toby said, um, but leadership is the process of influencing people. That was the word I was looking for. Influencing people by providing purpose, direction, and motivation to accomplish the mission and improve the organization. That's their definition. So, influencing people to accomplish the mission influencing people to accomplish the mission there you go six words six words uh, i guess that's it maybe i'll remember it and i like uh, the motivation part the motivation part is so important yep absolutely um i hope those of you who are watching will be with us uh, either online or in person this coming sunday as we jump into the book of judges and continue our discussion on leadership. In chapter 2 of Judges, it says that Joshua died and the elders died. The people did what was right as long as Joshua was alive, as long as the elders were alive. But as soon as the leaders were gone, they went astray. So leadership is so very important. So, for those of you in grace groups, take some time to talk about um, what Russ has just opened up for us. And uh, feel free to reach out to us. If ever in your discussions you run into something that you're like, man, I don't know what the answer. Nobody knows what the Bible says about whatever the issue is. Reach out. If we don't know it, we can find somebody who does know it or go look for it. And we'd be happy to help you. All right. Thanks, Russ.